All right, before we begin, let's thank our sponsors. Great sponsors, fantastic sponsors, wonderful sponsors. <clears throat> all the above. Uh, Inspect All Pest Services, one of our sponsors for Podcast and Pours 3, Saturday, October 12th, Tannery Row, Buford, Georgia. That's coming up. Get your tickets to thebaileyshow.com. Nick from Inspect All will be there, providing the highest quality termite pest and wildlife control. Maybe not doing that at Podcast and Pours, but they'll do that at your house. Plus, uh, take care of your insulation, pressure washing, gutter maintenance, and other home services in Metro Atlanta and the surrounding areas. That's inspectallservices.com. Uh, the Mad Dog. The Mad Dog's going to be there. Mad Dog Manny Aurora. He'll be on uh, the shows this week. So if you have any legal questions, get those to me, thebaileyshow.com. The Aurora Law Firm.com litigates all over the United States, based out of Georgia, talking to the best of the best criminal defense. White collar crime, DUI, drug offenses, and more. You know the Mad Dog doing federal cases all over the place. He's a badass. Need help? Get help. Dr. David Markwell, markwelltherapy.com. They're at Ridgeline, uh, Ridgeline Counseling. He's got, he'll be there. I believe he'll be at Podcast and Pours 3. Yeah, Ridgeline Counseling, 10 therapists in-house there. Three locations in Georgia. One across from Sprayberry High School on uh, Sandy Plains in East Cobb, Marietta, near the square in McKaysville outside of Blue Ridge. But the good doctor can uh, do virtual sessions. So set up an appointment, ridgelinecounseling at gmail.com. FPC Insurance, perfect for new homeowners like us. We're just looking to reshop your current insurance policies. Five-star service and shop over 35 A-rated companies. You can get a quote online, fpcinsuranceservices.com. Email them, info at fpcinsuranceservices.com. Or you can call them, 888-308-1841. House, flood, auto, moto. You name it, they do it. My wife, Ray J. So is me. The Ray part of it, she's your guy. Buying or selling a house in Florida, Georgia. She can definitely take care of that. 404-797-4600 or I am Rachel Guy at gmail.com. Alternate Power Solutions, another sponsor for Podcasts and Pours 3. They'll be out there. Family owned and operated. Good people. They are a Generac generator dealer. Offering sales, service, installation, and repair of automatic home standby and portable generators. Making sure when your lights go out, your lights don't go out. I like it when that happens. I know. it's You don't know it until you need it, right? <laughs> I, really, I really like them. Yeah. <laughs> these are great people. A-plus rating with the BBB. Call, or, uh, call and request a free home assessment. 770-853-7571. Or you can go online, poweringgeorgia.com. Plus, you get $500 off your entire installation. If you use discount code Bailey, that's my last name, Bailey. That's you. JHM Land Solutions, another family owned and operated. Uh, we're talking land clearing, mulching, tree company, commercial, residential. You look around, you've got all this land. I don't care where you're at, what state you're at. You look around, you got acres of land, you got stuff. And you're like, when am I going to get to this stuff? You're never going to get to that stuff. Do it for me. JHM Land Solution, they get to the stuff. Land clearing, grading, mulching, tree work, servicing Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee. 770-274-9120. That's 770-274-9120. No job too big, no job too small. So it's not this doesn't have to be a huge job, just any job. And they'll do it. Uh Jayco Contracting. I was texting with Cliff Bratcher the other day asking where I was staying for podcasting Pours 3. Because uh, Cliff is going to be out there. I think some of his people are going to be out there, too. We're talking the best of the best with gutter and roofing specialist. You know, it's hard to find a honest roofer dude. Uh, they are licensed and insured roofing and gutter specialists covering all of Georgia. Platinum preferred contractor with Owens Corning, the creator of Pink Panther. Free gutter guards with the purchase of a roof. That's cool. That's what I need. That's what we need. I want those. No critters. Don't let anybody get in the house. No critters. Satisfaction guarantee, commercial and residential. Uh, more information, jacocontracting.com. That's Cliff Bratcher, 770-316-3876. You want to sponsor the show, whether it's the podcast or the radio show uh, on WJRR Saturdays. That's about to expand. TheBaileyShow.com. All right, let's begin. Go ahead and leave a comment about how you deal with your children leaving home while I recover. Honey, I raised the kids. Our kids leaving the nest is never easy. So in order to cope, Jason and Rachel have decided to share the journey of their kids, Caleb and Ariel, or bees as most know her. Follow the story in this podcast. Honey, I raised the kids. 
Yeah, there it is, episode 26 of Honey, I Raised the Kids, the podcast about us becoming empty nesters. Uh, thanks for being here. My name's Jason Bailey. There's my wife, Rachel. Hey, y'all. Together we are Ray J. Yeah, like us as Ray J. It's so fun. Ray J, this is uh, a very monumental episode, not because it's there's huge. any, not because there's any you know, significance of the number or how many we've done or whatever the case may be. But uh, this is uh, us uh, being in a situation for the very first time that our daughter is home. And on top of that, uh, our son both is here. Kids. Both kids. Are, yeah, both kids. Both kids. <laughs> both kids are at the house. Listen, this mama heart is so happy. Yeah. So happy. Both kids are here. Uh, you know, I... Like when when we picked Ariel up the other day, mm-hmm. uh, I was like, "How long has she been gone? Like, how long has she been at school? She's That's only been at no, it's been a month. Uh, August, September. It's September. Uh, it's, well, we're yeah, we're because she went August the first week of August, August first. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was like the second week of August when we no, left. No, no, no. It was that first weekend of August, so it was like, because that was the move-in time, so, because she moved in early, remember? All right. Yeah, so first week of August, and um, now we're at September, we're in September, so she's gone for almost two months. All right, well, yeah. I, th- I thought it was, I thought it was longer than that. It felt like forever. It did, it did, it, it, it felt like, it felt like a very, very long time that she'd been gone from the house. And so, uh, you know, when I thought about it, I was like, she's not been gone that long. No, it's not been that long. Long enough. Yeah, but it's not that long. I mean, it's it's like she came home like she'd been, you know, off at war for two years. That's what it felt like. You know? <laughs> so it, it's it's very, it's, it's funny because um, I had a deja vu. Okay. Now, now that she's home and, uh-huh. and, and the, you know, the one thing that she requested was that she get home cooking? Yeah, she needed you to. She needed you to make her some man meat. Yeah, she right. Is her mama's daughter. Right. So you know, well, she wanted you to cook. You know, your broccoli she and the did, chicken. Yeah. And and it's funny because it wasn't an, an extravagant meal. It no, was they were her favorites. Yeah, it was just kind of like a go to for us. It was yeah. chicken and broccoli and you know whatever. I mean, wh- easy things that I like. <sighs> I do. The girls, all of the girls, talk about my broccoli all day, every day. Ta- Tati will still text me and be like, "Chi Chi, mm. I miss your broccoli." <laughs> and, and it's funny how food becomes nostalgic. Yeah. Right. You know, like when we're eating it. You know, like so let's let's go back to when we were in Georgia, when all these girls were growing yeah. up in our house. You know, so we're making dinner, and it's yeah. not a big deal. You yeah. know, I'm but putting we eat a- dinner as a family every night. Mm. Right, so you know, putting brisket on the grill, yeah. whatever the case may be, you're doing the broccoli, mm-hmm. um, and, and and it's not a it's not a big deal. No, it's just normal. It's just normal. And years later, fast forward, when these kids are going off into the quote unquote real world, yep. which is not yet the real world, I get it, but you know they're they're not they're not eating like this anymore. Nope. You know, and so Bees made a comment the other night. <laughs> this was so funny. She made a <laughs> so funny. She, she made a comment the other night. Uh, where, where she's like, you know, uh, she's like, oh my God, this is so good. You know, for the past month, I've just been eating ramen noodles and pasta and, and pasta and stuff like, like that. The girls, they try really hard, her and her roommates to like make dinner and eat dinner together. And I really think that's because of our kid. Yeah, probably. Well, it's different now. And, and, but when she made that comment, I'm like sitting there going, kid, you have no idea. Yeah. You know, I, I remember my first <laughs> year in college at Wingate College in Wingate, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was on the meal plan. But for some reason, it like, I mean, it was just, you had to take a break from going to the cafeteria. The cafeteria offered a lot. And it wasn't horrible food by no stretch. And you could get three fulls. Okay. But it was like this... Almost like it wasn't cool to eat there all the time, one. <laughs> unless you're hungry. <laughs> right, right, unless you're starving. <laughs> it wasn't cool to eat there all the time. And then, two, you know, there's only so much of that food you can take. Cafeteria food. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It, it's it's all, it, it all kind of starts to taste the same. Sure. 
So uh, I remember my girlfriend at the time coming to visit me and I had had it all wrong. Like she had this nice little apartment with a woman's touch with a refrigerator and a kitchen and yeah. they had food and, you know. Girls are way different than boys in college. Way different. <laughs> my my mindset going into college wasn't to have a room uh, of luxury. It no, was. It was not to have your comforts it was, so that you can function. It was to party. It, yeah, but it was like it was like camping with a roof. <laughs> You know, that, terrible. That, <laughs> I, like I, I, I didn't realize it until like halfway through my freshman year yeah. that you could actually have a nice room. Yeah. Like I saw people bring in big stereo systems. You know, that was yeah. a thing at the time. To, you know, television. Like I had a TV. Yeah. A CD player. Yep. My Nintendo and clothes. That's it. You know, and, and that was it. So anyway, you know, I ventured, you know, oh, oh, my, and I had a, a small little refrigerator, like mm-hmm. the college dorm refrigerator. Yeah, that little cube <clears> thing. Little, well, it's a little bit bigger than the cube thing. It had, had the freezer up top. Oh, that all, you got the nice one. That Well, that always overfroze. Yeah. And you'd always have to take a hairdryer to it like every three months. <laughs> so anyway, my girlfriend of high school, uh, high school, she comes and visits me and she, she comes into the room and we, you know, we weren't supposed to have girls uh, stay over or whatever and stuff. And anyway, so we're sneaking around and she, she looks and she goes, what, what how are you surviving? <laughs> and I, how do you live? And I said, what do you mean? How am I surviving? She goes, how are you surviving? She's like, you have no food here. I said, well, there's a cafeteria there and I've got some food in there. She's like, you've got dip in the refrigerator and beer. And I said... Uh, the necessities. I said, yeah. I said, I think I've got chips up there, too, if you need something. <laughs> and she goes, we're, we're going to go grocery shop. But I didn't have any money, you know. Yeah. So she takes me grocery shopping, and she paid for it. I'll never forget this. She takes me grocery shopping, and she pays for it. Because I told her, I said, look, I go, I, I don't have any money for groceries. And she says, I'll pay for it. And I said, oh, okay, thank you. And I felt horrible because I was always, like I am today, I'm always the guy that'll pay, right? Mm-hmm. And she takes me to the grocery store, and um, and she, it was like my mother taking me grocery shopping. And and I felt bad because she was paying for it, so I didn't want to, like, get anything expensive. So it was like, uh, tuna, bologna, lemon pepper, mustard, and bread, please. <laughs> That's it. That's, that's how you can survive. <laughs> what? Well, I I had no I had no stove. I had no hot plate. Yeah. I didn't have a microwave. I don't you think for real rough in it. Yeah. So it was literally, you know, and I just didn't have time to eat a lot, even though I okay. should have. I mean, I wish I would have had a better diet at the time because I was an athlete, you know, and playing football. But it was it was really just snacks and late night, you know, food after you've and gone beer. out. And beer, yeah, yeah, you know, butt ice, uh, and leftover Oof. pizza from Geno's. Oof. And so, yeah. yeah, it was. Which, by the way, that place just closed down. I oh, heard. that's so sad. After it's like in hot tub time machine. Thirty plus years. Yeah. <laughs> when you're driving through Kodiak, <laughs> Kodiak Valley, everything's closed. <laughs> Didn't you break up with Jenny? Da, 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 da? Yeah. Great oh, Buffalo. Great White Buffalo. She was great. We swapped for Jenny's junior year. And <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, so when Bees came home and and she's saying this, I'm like, kid, you don't even know, you don't even know the half of it. No, you know, she's going to. We put groceries in her cute little condo. She's got the most bougie, ridiculous room on the planet. She is set and ready. To she's go. got a credit card. I mean, it's and like she's got a closet that's a beast. Yeah, and she's got a credit card, so she goes out to these. You know, she can do brunches. Yeah, it just didn't exist. So anyway, going back to the deja vu she thing. She doesn't have to drink but ice. She can drink mimosas. I'd rather her drink no mosas, like yeah. nothing. I'd do uh, college water, <laughs> hydrate and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, so here is the here is the 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 deja vu of our daughter coming home, uh, knowing that she just needed a little. She needed to come home. Breath of normalcy. Yeah, she just needed Henry, really. And she needed her dog. Yeah. I remember. One time I went to my mother's house coming home from college. And I mean, I'd been in college probably three of was maybe my, my senior year, but I'd gotten into my career and I was go, 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 go. And I didn't realize how much of the go, 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 go I was going. Oh. And I went down to Sarasota from Orlando. Uh huh. And my mother, she was living with some dude. There was a guy. I don't know. There was some dude involved in this. And 
uh, I got there and I went into this bedroom and there was this singular full size bed, you know, small bed. And that was my bed. And I slept for, I think it was, day. <laughs> I think it was 16 to 18 hours. <laughs> And I still to this day, I've never done that. Like, yeah. I'm, I don't do that. Yeah. Like, I have a clock that goes off, you know, five to seven hours, and I'm up. Even as a kid, I would you do that. You came home to your safe space. I mean, you were home. Whether it was home, you were I, home. I still to this day, 20 plus years later, remember how good of a sleep that was. <laughs> I'll never forget that. It was That sleep was so good that I asked if I could have that bed. Because I thought it was the bed. Oh, that's funny. No, it wasn't the bed. It was the environment. Yeah. Well, Which is really funny because I worked really hard because this is not the house that we raised the kids in. You know, we're in a different house. We're in Florida. And this is not the house that, like, she comes home to or she has come home to and all the things. So when she's coming home from college and she's coming home to visit, I want her to feel like home. Like, I want her to feel like this is, like, my comfort space, my comfort home. And um, I worked really hard to make sure that her room was all done, everything was right and comfy and nice, clean, fluffy blankies and her Henry pillows and Henry had a bath and the house is great and everything's together so that when she walks in, it's that immediate (sighs) and she feels good. I think I did well at that because she slept like you slept. Yeah. (laughs) She went up to her bed. And I have a picture of her from yesterday. Like we did, uh, we saw Aunt Ree and Grandma and Poppy and all of the the kids and all of that kind of fun stuff. And she comes home and gets into her room, lays down in the bed. Henry cuddles up next to her and he is snoring louder than I have ever heard him snore and she's just out mm-hmm. for well, hours well that's that's that was my point is yeah. is her coming home and i saw how much she was sleeping and yeah. i was going i remember that <laughs> you know because you know she's burning the candle at both ends and yeah. she she has not yet figured out time management yeah. uh because you know she wants to go out with her friends yeah. and she wants to be a part of this and wants to be a part of something and she got a little boyfriend who comes over and they stay you know Stay up late, I'm sure, yeah. and and she's involved in this whole thing, blah blah blah. blah. So, I, and I get it, I, mm-hmm. I I understand. She, and I think everybody needs to go through burning the candle at both ends. I yeah. think there's something to be said about learning that lesson, where you go, 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 to what? the point where you can't go anymore. Where then you even at a young age, she's 19, goes, you know, like look. Shit, maybe I need to slow down. Maybe maybe I don't need to go out Friday night. I might not go tonight. Maybe I might not go to party dance. <laughs> I'm going to stay home from party dance Friday night. I'm just going to stay home and watch a little Law and Order. How about that? You know? Uh, and I would I would do that, you know. It's called Rhythm and Bruise, by the way. Rhythm and Bruise? Yeah, you'll probably be going when we go to the Georgia game. Oh, that's that's going to be next week's episode. Yeah. Is- Y'all want to know about Jason Bailey tailgating with the college students and going to the bars with the college students? They're like, there's a process. And the parents go with the kids. Yeah, and the process for me starts with a nap. I did mention that, and she said to please make sure, <clears throat> pardon me, please make sure that at some point in time during the day, because it is a very long day, this was very precedent for her, please make sure that you get a nap. How am I supposed to get a nap at a tailgate? I mean, listen, everybody knows, and your daughter even said, I mean, we all know that he can just sit in the chair and fall asleep. What? So just make sure that he sits in a chair and falls asleep and gets a power nap because he's going to need it. Has this really been a conversation? Yeah. What about everybody else? What about the other dads? Nobody else needs a nap, just you. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you, but everybody knows you need your nap. Don't worry about me and my nap. I'm fine. <laughs> this is uh, this is old territory. For, don't worry okay. about me. We'll <clears throat> see if you can hang. Oh, my God. We'll see we if I can hang. We'll see. How this goes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, just 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 to prove 
Uh-huh. Just to prove myself. Okay. Not that I need to prove myself to anybody. You, I think you might. Your daughter doesn't have faith in you. <laughs> you guys talking behind my back that I need a nap just to prove <laughs> how much of a badass I still am when oh, we go to, to the University of Alabama, Georgia game, and we're tailgating. I'm not only going to get arrested, I'm going to get in a fight, I'm going to be drunk, and I'm going to vomit. I can't wait. Yeah. Big Daddy Bang Bang coming in strong. I might even hook up with a sorority girl. No, you won't. Probably not. That's dirty. Yes, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm still getting arrested and I'm still vomiting. All right. That's fine. (laughs) Frank the Tank. Let's go. Frank the The Tank. tank. Frank Frank the Tank. tank. Oh, bees. I can't wait. It's going to be so exciting. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, but everybody knows that you need a nap. And um, she did suggest you sitting in one of the chairs. Well, I have my truck. I can just go in my truck. Um, yeah, I mean, you really are notorious for just sitting and falling asleep. So, it's fine. We can, uh, we can do that. I love how you guys are talking this trash about me behind, you know, and, and it's it, funny because like when- You don't even know. You know. Oh, and like, you're some big party girl. We, you know, back in the day, you were great. Now that you're that age, we go to the casino and it's like 1230 and you're like, are you tired? No, I'm not tired. Bullshit. I'm like, well, you, but because you take a nap and I don't. I no. don't get a nap during the day. I can't tell you the last time, now that I'm not in the radio world, taking a nap. I don't take, well, I mean, every once in a while, I'll walk around and sleep. When we were, Actually, that's not true. We I took go- a nap at the uh, stoplight the other day. <laughs> when we used to go to the casinos and all when we were living in Georgia and California and everything, you were working in radio, you would come home nap and then go like when we would drive to the casino from the house in Roswell to Murphy North Carolina you would come home from work I would drive so you could nap while I was driving Mm. and then we would go you napped I never napped gotcha so fair I'm just I'm just saying I mean um I'll be fine but there you know Here's the thing. Here's, the, you know, I didn't see that one coming with the whole nap stuff. But <laughs> as I find out, there's rules to this this tailgating. We're not hey, even you got rules. We're not even going into the game. We're yeah, just I got new rules. We're just tailgating at the game. We're not even no. going in. No, and These tickets are ridiculous. I have to wear a collared shirt. Yeah, you got you got to wear Alabama collared shirt. Well, of course, yeah. Oh. And you have to wear a dress. Yeah. Which is crazy. Now, here's something cool. We have a two-peer and a friend by the name of Andrew Sparks, who is a sponsor of the podcast and has since the very, very beginning with Sparky's Lawn Service. He's one of the nicest people you could meet. And if you are going to Podcast in Pours 3 at Tannery Row uh, in Buford, Georgia, uh, he'll be there. Uh, I'm sure he'll be there. I don't know if he's coming to four with Saliva in Orlando. That's Saturday, December 14th. By the way, tickets for both available on thebaileyshow.com. Really hope to see you guys at uh, both or at least one of them. So we, last week on the BS, we were uh, the BS podcast. Brandon on the show brought up the, uh, the hey, dudes. Sh- hey dudes. Yeah, I keep wanting to call them old dudes. They're popular. Yeah, these popular shoes. I had no idea what they were. So I, I mean, southern thing. I figured it out, and I was like, "Oh, it's a slip on. They're kind of mm-hmm. like canvasy looking thing." I see a lot of people wearing them. Bees has a bunch of them. Okay, bees. I had no yeah. idea. Our daughter has a bunch of them. Yeah, bright pink ones. No idea. So I'm like, "Okay, great. You know, fantastic." Me personally, that's not my style. That's not. It is now. That's not. <laughs> I have to have like my, like I don't like flip flops. My feet have to be secure with laces and everything it's because in case i gotta regulate right i know like i was put, all the time gotta regulate in my mind here's what i'm thinking all the time uh-huh is what if the russians come right like that oh, okay okay the russians are coming and i if what am i wearing right now and will that be sufficient to survive for the next couple months for the russians yeah, like if I have to go up to the woods, to the mountains, if it's to regulate, oh. you know, whatever the case may be, like Red Dawn. Oh, okay. You know, those guys were good. Not only watching Red Dawn again. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. So, I mean, they got lucky because they were able to stop off the kids, uh, one of the dude's dad's place and get a bunch of uh, clothes Supplies, and jackets and stuff. Yeah. But they went to school and because it was, you know, winter time, well, getting into winter in Alaska, they went to school, you know, 
jeans, jacket, shirt, boots, they were ready to regulate. Okay. I don't think wearing Hey Dudes is a good regulator shoe. Because I feel like, like if you could regulation station and some hey dudes. Now, what, what is it the ideal shoe to regulate in the mountains? Why are we in the mountains? We live in Florida. We would have to travel to the mountains because that's where we would go because oh. that's where they went in Red Dawn. Oh, oh, okay. That's I mean, maybe survival since, 101. Since we have to travel. You could probably bring an extra pair of shoes. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm no, I can't go back to the house. The Russians have already, oh, yeah, like I'm in the truck. This is what you're wearing. I'm, yeah, what I'm wearing right now. So we're going to live in some combat boots. It doesn't, this, it doesn't necessarily have to be combat boots, but it, you know, it you're going to regulate in your own clouds. <laughs> that okay. makes more sense. Yeah. Like right. if, if I had to All pick right. a pair of right. shoes out of my closet, I would take that my on cloud boots. Yes. What? No, no, no. But you're talking about this is what you're wearing all the time. Okay. What you're wearing all the time is what? Petunia. Petunia. Did you drop something? She did. BB-8 just mm. fell over. No. Oh. Um, so you're talking about what you're wearing on your feet on a regular basis. You don't have time to go back to the house. <laughs> so you don't have time to go back to the house to get your on-cloud boots because you're wearing your on-clouds. Right. So you're regulating in your on cloud running sneakers. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to say on clouds because it does not sound tough. But OC. Yeah, well, you don't have to say that. Just say sneakers. That sounds tougher. Sneakers. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> regulate. Just sneak up on the Russians. Regulation athletic attire shoes. Oh. That's what you would refer to them as. Regulation station. Regulation shoes. Regulation athletic shoes. Okay. Yeah. You know, you understand? They're closed toed. See, the hey dudes are. They're closed toed too. <clears throat> yeah, but they're not tied. <clears throat> they got the old school bass, you know, the little. Uh, I look like I'm milking a cow in the video. <laughs> the old school. Uh, Keep going. <laughs> you know, the tassels, the the shoelaces, you know, when they go through the loop and then uh, on the outside of the loop. I don't know what that is. I'm. Younger than you are. I, maybe I just don't know. You don't know what a shoelace is? I know what a shoelace is, but are you talking about some kind of tassel? No, no, no. The, okay, so the way that the uh, Hey Dudes, yeah, right? They're called yeah. Hey Dudes, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's got the shoelaces. Mm -hmm. They're not tied. No, they're kind of stretchy. They're like bungee cords. All right, listen. And it goes through the hole, mm -hmm. and on the other side of the hole, the way that they take the lace is that they tassel it. They twist it so it doesn't come through the hole. Okay. Oh. Okay. That it's okay. it just doesn't hang out. Okay. They they have it wrapped so it doesn't go back through the hole. That's when I was a kid. That was a style. Oh. The same style that that you would use for bass. It was um the bass boat shoes. They were brown boat shoes. Yeah. But they but they 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 weren't like the dock siders. This was the evolution of the dock sider. It was a boxier shoe, mm -hmm. and it was a lighter brown. The dock siders were like 80s. The bass approach, uh, the bass shoes were into the early 90s. Oh. Yeah. So, like, that was high, my high school, my freshman, sophomore high school days. So, you did used to wear shoes like these? No, no, no. I, it has nothing to do with the shoe, Rachel. It's, oh, it's, it's the, the, it's the, ta the it's the, yes, yeah, the tying of it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I've secure. never worn these types of shoes. Oh. Yeah. This is uh, like the, they were leather. New for you. Boat shoes were leather. Yeah. Yeah. So, they were leather. These are, these your feet can breathe in. They're very light. They're very cheap to easy to make. Um, you, you like I lifted it up. It was like air. Yeah. You know. So it feels like you got nothing on your feet. And then I posted something about it, and some dude was like, "He's like, this is the most durable, the best shoes I've ever owned. Uh, you will be extremely like, like everybody he, loves them. Like he worked for him or it's something. It's a thing. Everybody loves them. The yeah. Kids love them. Yes. It can be trendy. Look at you, Mr. Trendy. Yeah, so uh, Andrew Sparks, thank you. That was very generous. So sweet. He sent both of us yeah. a pair of Hey Dudes. Alabama Stammer. And their Alabama Hey yep. Dudes, which I know scarred his soul being a Georgia fan. <laughs> and we're going to the Alabama or, or George Alabama game. We are. And he just possibly cursed his dogs. Oh, ooh, I didn't even think about that. You know what? Your Georgia fans are so incredibly supportive, like so supportive, just because only 
because bees goes to Alabama. I know. That's it. Because they're like, and her little boyfriend goes to uh, Georgia. Georgia. UGA. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, roll tide. Uh huh. Not happy about it. That's what the, but... uni- that's what the universe. <laughs> hey, Georgia fans, you want to know what the University of Alabama is doing? They're recruiting pretty young girls to go to school there mm-hmm. to date boys at UGA. <laughs> To, to psych them out. To to yeah, to have them say roll tide. It's it's a football ploy. Mm-hmm. They're they're really this is what Alabama's doing. Mm-hmm. This really like this is how we're gonna win the Georgia game. Mm-hmm. It's bees. Yeah, it's bees. <laughs> Be- Bees hasn't even told us. She's part of this, like, she doesn't even know. Re- she's part of this recruitment yeah. the program. Yeah. <laughs> we're, wa- we're wondering why we're not paying anything. It's just. <laughs> what surprise? <laughs> Thanks. Everything's free. We're like, oh, this is great. University of Alabama is so sweet. That's Southern hospitality. <laughs> but she's actually part of a big mind fuck program. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a cult. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is a cult. The whole SEC is a cult, but this is a real cult. <laughs> it is. It's right. a learning thing. Um, and we didn't even tell everybody Caleb was there. We did. We said we mentioned at the beginning, and then we yeah. got distracted. But he showed up uh, late Saturday night. Yeah, because he had to work. He had to work, and uh, he and his fiance, which... Uh, I love her. I, did she, I, I didn't hear her speak, so I don't she know. Does she doesn't. So she literally, and she even says that their, their autisms balance, balance each other out. It's real funny because she's like, he's very big and like, oh, I didn't even tell you. Oh my God. Hmm. She has a tism touch. What do you it, mean she has a tism oh touch? Oh my God. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. You'll have to watch today while like the kids are interacting and stuff. Uh-huh. So when Caleb gets big and loud and he just, he is so big and big and loud all the time. And she is the complete opposite and just super chill and so quiet. And when he gets to that, like, gigantic, it's too much space, Mm -hmm. she literally just reaches over and touches him. Like, she, she, like, touches his arm or his leg when they were at the house the other day. He was, like, huge. And she just reached over, put her hand just on his, his leg, just touched him, and then removed her hand. And it, it literally was like, hmm. Wow, that's pretty. Did they talk about that or does? I don't know. It was just the uh, coolest so you, thing to watch. Oh, so you don't know if it's a thing. You well, just... I told her. I saw her do it. And she's like, yeah, it helps him just realize that, like, internally, like, his brain. I guess when you tell him to be quiet, this is a autism thing. When you tell him to be quiet. He doesn't want to do it because you're telling him. Mm-hmm. But if she does this, then he internally <clears throat> recognizes that he's being too big, and it just brings him back down. Interesting. It's so cool. Yeah, I want to. Wa- I want to watch it. You know, it's that- really neat to watch. Yeah. And it like it's like she's like, bink, and it goes. <laughs> It, it drives me insane, though, that their whole generation, you know, even Bees' generation, is the, the if you tell them to do not to do something or just to tell them to do anything, it's... You don't know what you're doing. It, yeah, it, it's it's like you're a dictator. It's like you're yeah. Hitler. It's like you're you're the worst person in the world. I've noticed that with, uh, with Ariel's friend that's staying with us. You know, like there's certain things I'd be like, dude, you just can't do that. And, and it's just like this weird vibe. Like, I can't believe you scolded me. Like, do you have any idea growing up what I, we used to get beat? I mean, my <laughs> friend's parents would be like, kid, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You know, you do that shit again and I'm going to whip your ass, kick you out of my house. Yeah. You didn't go and tell your parents that and stuff like that. You no, go. No, they're just rules in people's houses. That's all. That's it. It's, it, it's my house, my rules. Mm hmm. You know what my rules are? Follow the rules. So it's. I uh, had that conversation about people bringing their extra dogs over to oh, our that's house. That's another thing. And Jesus. I was an ass about it because I'm like, and my sister agreed with me. She always, always, every single time asks if she can bring her dog over to our house. Why? Because we have five dogs and it's not her house, it's our house. Yeah, it's, it's weird when we have people over, we. Like all these dogs show up now. Nobody asks. Granted, we have a a, a good sized yard and a good sized house, yeah, and, but, and it's okay. But it's just 
in my opinion, very rude. And to not ask. To not ask. Because and so, we have five dogs. And then you get caught into a situation where you're like, well, if one parent brings a dog, the other parent has to bring a dog. And so, yeah. I mean, we've got five. So our dogs are locked in our room. Because, in their own house. In their own house because everybody's, a, you know, in this situation, there's a new baby coming over. So, so I said no. We said, we said no. No dogs, zero dogs. <clears throat> the only people that have a problem with it are our parents. I know it's so crazy, which I remember growing up, I had a dog that legit, she was like uh, some kind of uh, sled dog or whatever, beautiful, huge dog. And she legit lived outside. Like, I don't remember, even when it snowed, we grew up in Maryland, even when it snowed, she was outside all the time. She never came in the house. She had her little dog house. She had a little heating pad in the dog house. She was lived outside. Mm. And then I had another dog that like dug crater holes in the yard. He lived outside. Never. These dogs never came in the house. Mm. And I'm like, why are y'all being weird about this? Because I'm saying you can't bring your dogs to my house one time. Yeah. I said, so I I text my mom who has this weird problem with, like, I haven't spoken to her. Was it 13, 17, something like that years? It was a long time. I never met her until a couple years ago. Right. So I had no relationship with her. And then before we moved to California, you know, we reconnected. Most of you know the story. Uh, And so then we moved back to Florida. So like you could not ask for a better situation to be in. For a, a for a mother yeah. and, and son to reconnect yes. at this stage in, in both of your all's lives, but especially your life as you get older and blah, 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 blah. And we love her. 45 minutes away, right? And that's that's like a slow 45 minutes. It's not a true 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, that's driving grandma. Right. Driving. And still, she's terrified to drive for, yeah. for whatever reason. I don't know. So she's got to bring this friend with her yeah, every time. Like her, too. It's nice. Right. She's got to bring this friend over with her every time. And and, and then she, it, it has to be a big to-do in order for her to come over. And so, like, it, it has to be a, a, a party and she has to know a week ahead of time. It's like, you're literally 45 minutes away. And it's, like I said, a slow 45 minutes. It's yeah. it's like 20-some miles, 28 miles or 32 miles. Like, you are you can come over whenever you want it doesn't have to be this mapped out. And it drives me insane that she does what she's always done. She lies to me. I'm like, well, you're bringing your friend because you need somebody in the car. It just doesn't make any sense. And then after all of her dogs finally die, which they should have been put down years ago, she goes out and gets another fucking dog. It was a big dog. And it's a big fucking dog. It makes no sense whatsoever. So now... You know, all these things that she couldn't do before, like travel or go do this or go see this and this and that. She now can't do it again because she went out and bought a dog, another dog or, or adopted a dog, whatever she, she did. rescued another dog. I, I mean, I, I just grew up around, this is what I grew up around. This is what made, drove me nuts my whole life is the ignorance that I grew up around. Y'all want the tea? Let's go. It's just. I could give it all. It just drives me insane, and, and this is why I'm such a realist, is because the this is actually not needed for this podcast. This is more <laughs> for the BS, but this is why I'm such a realist. But anyway, going back to the concept of this podcast, of us growing up empty nesters, is, is that, you know, we deal with this, is, you know, when we got the kids, and then we got the, the, the family, and the mothers, and, the, and all this stuff. When everybody's coming over. So, and- I was just like, I text my mom, I said, no dogs. Uh, there's the, the new baby that's yeah. coming over. No dogs, no yeah. dogs. And she, she's only a week old. I just, I would like for our dogs to settle and they're meeting the do- the baby for the first time. And you know what? The last time when we had uh, Lindsay over and she had just had Cameron, our dogs needed time. Like Tuna loved her and Milty didn't want anybody to come near the baby. Mm. So why would we create a stressful environment for our dogs to have every other dogs when there's already extra people. And Jamie's coming to do B's hair at the house. She's got a baby. And she's got a little girl, too. So let's, you know, chill because there's a lot of people Well, I t- and not this time. I told my mom, I said, look, no dogs, baby's coming over. That's all I said. 
And yeah, she wrote back fair. and she says, oh, as much as I'd like to see the baby, I'm going to stay home. So I wrote back, cool. Because yeah. I knew that's what she was going to say. It's yeah. like, and then, and then like an hour later, she goes, is everyone else's dog staying home? Yeah. And I, the way that I wanted to reply was, who the fuck cares? I was like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes. But I are. replied back with yes. Yep. And that's all. And then I hadn't heard from her. Yeah. So I'm like, if this is not your house. It's, it's nobody's that, house. It's our that's house. That's what my sister said. She said. If you don't want to come over, stay the fuck at home. I'm yeah. I, like, I don't have time for the bullshit yeah. that goes along with the bullshit. <laughs> you know what? Our kids are coming home. Our kids are coming home. And we're, this is our little party. We're inviting you in so that you can see. I mean, both kids at the same time. Bees is home. Caleb is home. I mean, a good time. You want to be a part of it? Cool. If you don't, sorry, we're not having extra dogs this time. Yeah. It's just, it, it drives me nuts. Again, life is easy. People make it difficult. They do. And then you're supposed to be smarter than that, me, and not get all amped up. Yeah. And, and, what? but if you don't do that and express yourself, as Madonna said back in the day, yeah. then they don't know. And, no, and then they push the issue because I got a phone call this morning pushing the issue. Yeah. And I had to lay the hammer down and say no. Boom. Yep. Boom. And Sarah's like, lay it. Sarah's like, they'll get over it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. She's like, I'm not bringing my dog. I always ask you. It's your house. That's how it works. That's normal. It's important for people. Like, we have to make this very clear to our parents. We don't care what you think. So, it's not your... kids say that, too. You don't like it when they say that. Yeah, but you know what the difference is? (laughs) is, We're adults. Is is I'm almost 50 and they're not. Yeah, that's true. You know? That is true. So, that's the difference. Yeah. Is, is like... And I'm talking about caring about... Like, this is our house, you know? Well, and someday we won't have five dogs, but we do today. We might have five dogs. Who knows? Who knows? Here's the thing is that, you know... We're here celebrating both of our kids being home. I know. I'm so excited. And and, and we want to make a day out of it. Yeah. And we want to, you know, do the pool and we got mm-hmm. the brisket and we got the food and, and all these good things. And and I just think it's very selfish. I don't want the extra. When people are not understanding that it's too much. Yeah. Right? It's just too much. Yeah. It's not about the dogs. It's like. It's, it's, not, a, it's not about them. It's about yeah. the kids. Yeah. It's, it, t- today is uh, about the kids. It's B's first time home. Yeah, from first school. time home in a month. It's first she's, time home from school. She's back from Germany, ladies hey, and gentlemen. Oh my god, I love it when B's comes home. Our World War II vet is home oh, for she, leave. <laughs> she had she had a lot of requests, and I mean, you're doing a brisket. She things that she needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and Caleb's here, and the kids got to hang out, watch movies, and. Uh, they were talking, uh, I mean, hanging out, I stayed up way late past my bedtime. You slept great last night. I did. Because both of the kids are home, so both of their dogs are in their rooms with them. Yeah. And so we were down to, uh, three dogs in our room, and Fat Fat doesn't really sleep in the bed, so we really only had Tuna and Jin Jin. And so, like... It was lovely because mm. Henry snoring on B's head, like loud as I don't know. I literally opened our bedroom door this morning and heard him across the house. Yeah, I I, I hate to be the guy, but it, it, I slept so well last night, not because Babe, our because kids. Because the kids were home. No, it's yeah. because the dogs were out of the bed. And well, my I, allergies are finally starting <laughs> to subdue. I slept great because we have both of our kids under the same roof together home okay and i love them i do but yeah, it, it was it was nice not to have <laughs> snoring and kicking and all the dogs that's on us though i know it's on it's us fine all right yeah. uh so that's that look uh do me a favor please uh go to the bailey uh if you want to go to one or both of podcast and pours please get your tickets now we're creeping up uh, on uh, October 12th. It's just a couple weeks away for Podcast and Pours 3. That's going to be in Buford, Georgia. Uh, we're coming up for it. We'll be at Tannery Road. Distinct Grace is performing. Brandon is going to be performing his song. I don't think I've ever played this on oh this one, but no. uh, this is the Brandon song that he's going to be performing. Bradley's in a Cadillac, smoking weed and doing crack. Found a bitch and broke her back. I don't know when he'll be back. back. 
I done took too many drugs, see the stars all day long. Geek right now, I'll write this song. Baby girls, homo. Yeah, that's, he's going to, wow. yeah. <clears throat> he's, then there's, I think that's the first time I've heard that. Then there's the AI version. Well, he's in a Cadillac. Oh. Smoking weekend, doing crack. Found it, she broke it back. <laughs> that's that's the ver. So there's going to be like a combination of both of those being done <laughs> with distinct grace and Brandon. So we'll have the thousand dollars cash and prizes, karaoke contest, hopefully special guests, drinks, food, uh, a good time. So get your ticket. Uh, get your tickets on thebaileyshow.com. We are creeping up on podcast imports three. And then we'll be moving on to Podcast and Pours 4, which will be Saturday, December 14th in Orlando at Elixir. Uh, downtown uh, Orlando off of Washington. Really, really cool concert venue that David, uh, just that he's, he's the owner, he had just built next door. Really, really, really cool. And so, but there's limit. I mean, it's not like this huge, you know, thousands and thousands of people in there. So it's a very intimate concert venue. Uh, saliva, click, click, boom, will be performing a special acoustic set, an entire set, but acoustically distinct grace will be opening for them. We'll do a live podcast out there. If you want to sponsor podcast and pours four and be on site, we've got room for clients, for vendors, for, you know, for people out there, you know, I've already got a couple, uh, individuals that are interested in coming out there and setting up their tent. Um, I'm going to do it. Well, I know that's that's another story for another day. But so if you if you want to get involved in that, just reach out to me all on the Bailey Show dot com social media. Like, share, follow, share the content, whether it's the honey stuff or the BS stuff. Please help us out. Uh, you know, these are free, but we do have a subscription base for the BS podcast for those episodes. So if you don't subscribe, we hope you really do. And um, and uh, if you do subscribe, then just share it with the world and let people know, like, you know, a lot of you are really good with sharing it and saying, hey, look, you got to listen to this podcast. You got to subscribe. And I think it works. But if the more and more people do it, you know, more and more people will do it. You know what I mean? So anyway, you got anything before we get out? I can't wait to see Frank the Tank. Frank the Tank. Frank the Tank. Frank the Frank Tank. Frank the Tank. All right. Uh, I got a whole week of uh, the BS podcast. So I hope you enjoy that. Have yourself a great day, fresh day. Thanks for support. Talk to you soon. Bye. I realize not everyone feels this way. And if you are okay with this stage of your life, honestly, more power to you. Thanks for listening. Get more information and episodes on thebaileyshow.com. Honey, I raised the kids. Subscribe at thebaileyshow.com. Yeah, baby. Uh